So Runeberg is one of those maps that most light tankers get and they just hate it. They despise Runeberg and I don't blame you because I'm the same way, but I'm going to show you how you can manage Runeberg in a light tank, in really any light tank, but specifically the ones that can kind of brawl. And I really say that in quotations because I had a video saying that can light tanks brawl and not really they more distract but you'll see what i mean in this video because in a light tank you have no armor you really can't take shots so can you really call it brawling i don't call it brawling um some light tanks actually do have turret armor and then i would consider it brawling such as like the t-54 lightweight and stuff but that's when you really get up the tiers right but in the hawk 30 you have no armor how am I going to play this? Well, I'm going to try and get as many shots into the CS-52 list as I can. I'm going to poke here. This is kind of a risky poke, but we're at the start of the battle here. And I don't think any of the tank destroyers are going to be set up yet in the back. Bulldog YOLOs me here. I don't know where this came from. Luckily, someone is able to clean him up um, before you can get another shot into me. And now we're in a situation against the CS-52 list. Luckily, I did have some help here um, where I'm... I'm at 308 HP, so I'm a one shot to him, especially with HE. And this guy basically is maybe, I would say, th still three shots for me, maybe two, um, depending on how the rolls go. So I'm going to poke this real quick. I'm trying to see if I can get a shot into this guy. It's not so simple. And I'm crying out for help. Now, once this CS kind of leaves this area well he stays behind these buildings but once this fight is over i'm going to show you guys kind of how the city works on Roomberg. i poke one time on this on this list it's a very risky it's a very high high risk poke but i decide to take it he doesn't pen with the he because he hits the very corner of my track and that's going to be the end of this brawl guys if you want to call it that i'm at 1466 damage so i've i've already i've already done almost 1500 damage against the Bulldog and the CS. And I'm crying out for help because we have a full HP Su-130, a full HP E4, a full HP Centurion. Um, this four Spirit took like one shot. Like everyone is full HP over here. You know, our RHM in the back as well. And I really, really want people to try and help me push this. It only takes one tank. And the Centurion and the E4 and all these guys are currently holding down people that are in phenomenal locations here. So. Here's how this map works, guys. I'm gonna show you real quick, right? I'm gonna pause actually, so we're not advancing. Here is how this map works. I wonder if I can change this back to yellow or whatever. Let me see, there we go. So in this this pocket right here, you, you have an advantage from this, this spawn on this side, from our, from our left, right? This is a really good area to basically go hold down. There's like a little, I don't know what you would call this rubble pile right here. And you kind of have the advantage in this area. You can do something similar on this side, but it's not, it doesn't really work the same because you don't have the shots necessarily going this way. It's, there's like a much bigger pocket over here and everyone likes to take this area of the map because you're relatively safe, right? Um, however, you can try to counter it from our spawn. But this is usually what happens. Usually you'll get people from their spawn in here having a fight with people in this area for like the whole entire game. And they just do this back and forth against each other, right? Um, until someone wins or someone gets way too aggressive and, you know, whatever happens here. But that's the fight you have. Where people make the mistake is that on our spawn, you have a huge advantage because... You have these two buildings right here. So let me kind of change the angle just a little bit here. You have these two buildings right here, which keep you perfectly safe from TDs that are back in this area, right in that corner. People never take advantage of this. This is why I always come here in my tank, because even in a light tank, because I want to win this portion of the map. It doesn't really work the same over here because the way these buildings are, like once you go through this gap, you're actually open. There is a little bush over here, but once you go through this gap, you're actually open to tank destroyers sitting in the back if they're going to be in that far corner, right? So the way this map works is you have an advantage here. This is your advantage from our spawn and no one ever takes it. Um, again, I've seen people poke this 
and then try and take shots of people that are in this area. But you could do it so easily from our side, right? If no one is here, you can poke like this right on this corner and smack people that are sitting right here in this area, like over and over and over again, because they're going to, they're going to want to sit right here in this bush. And I'm telling you, this works. Like as long as you're not contested from here, you can do this all day long. You can continue poking here, or you can poke this little corner and, and try and hit someone that's sitting right here. And you can win this portion of the map. And you have a huge advantage of people here because they're going to constantly be looking this way, right? They're going to be looking this way and they're going to be trying to poke out even to take shots of people that are sitting like on this corner. And people want to do all the fighting right here. That's what I'm saying to you. People always want to do all the fighting like right here and also in these little two areas. But what they don't realize is that this whole area of the map, like you have a pretty big advantage. And even then from their spawn, you can, again, I, I say you can kind of do the same from here, but if someone is sitting now, so we'll kind of continue with this game. If someone is, is sitting now back in this corner, you're not going to you're not going to have a very good time trying to poke this, right? So you can see what I mean now. This entire area is open to fire. But from from going this way, it's not because you have these two buildings. So I hope this makes sense to you. I would really like urge you guys to try and experiment with the zero line, you know, with this line all the way over here because I've seen this happen so many times where we have a really good advantage here and people just don't they don't want to take advantage of it. So I'm, I'm saying one of you meds, like, come here, like come to where I'm at because I want help trying to eliminate the CS. But unfortunately, he's just too far back at this point. So let's advance a little bit. I'm going to show you guys a little bit more about Runeberg. CS does appear here. This guy ends up dying because, again, he's not safe right in this location due to um, tank destroyers sitting in the pack, right? You don't want to sit here. So, but he tries it and, you know, it, it, it doesn't work out. But you learn, right? You learn from making the mistakes. So what I'm actually going to do at this point is come up right to here. I'm going to advance and I'm going to slide in here. Now, once you get to here, if you're not being contested by the CS-52 list here, you have a bush that you can poke into as a light tank. And if someone is sitting like in this area, like a light tank or something, you're going to spot them from poking into this bush. And you'll also be able to hold this corner. You'll be able to spot people in this corner. And you might even spot people in this area as well down below. So... Spotting the tank destroyers becomes very challenging when they're sitting all the way in the back, but this is how you can kind of progressively scout it, I like to say. I always say progressively scout. This is how you can do it on Ruberg, and we now have the CS-52 list in a trap here. Now, the Sioux comes out here. I don't know how this guy isn't punished by tank destroyers sitting in the back. He might just not be spotted yet, because the way... I'm going to draw this out for you guys, right? The way the game mechanics work in this game is, say you're sitting at this building, right? This is the building you're sitting at and your tank is right here. This is your tank, okay? This is your tank right here. Your viewport is usually like right on your turret, right? Well, this Su-130 can be poking right here and actually he'd have you lit, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't have him lit yourself, right? Because his vision is like this and he can see the very edge of your tank but all you're seeing is the building, right? This is very dumb and, and like, I, well, I don't want to say dumb. It's analytical, but it's kind of a dumb drawing. But a lot of people do not know that about this game. They think that once you see any part of a tank and once, you know, a tank sees any part of you, that they're spotted. It doesn't work like that, guys. Vision comes from the turret, from where your viewport is. Wargaming is very specific with this, man. But in this situation, it doesn't matter because I have the CS permalit anyway, right? Because I'm in his proxy, which is 50 meters. But it's a really cool example to show you guys because that's something that I actually did not know about this game. I thought it was, as I described earlier, I thought that perhaps as long as someone can see my tank, they can spot me. And as long as, you know, any part of my tank is visible to them, I can see them. It does not work like that. If I poked this corner right now and someone was sitting right here, they would have me lit right now, but I wouldn't have them lit because they can see a part of my tank. There is a bush here, so 
Maybe not. But you understand what I'm, I'm talking about, guys. Use this to your advantage. You know, when, whenever you have someone sitting in a corner like this, you can actually get a good angle on them to light them and they won't even have you lit, right? So these tank stars are getting spotted presumably by the Centurion who makes a really aggressive play here to kind of go down through here. I think this is, again, a very risky play because these tank destroyers are going to have open shots into you, but if you can poke this corner and kind of side scrape it and you're not being contested over here, which is another likely scenario, then you can spot tank destroyers here. Now here's where I make my second big mistake of this game. My first mistake was poking very aggressively on the CS-52 list, um, but here, uh, and maybe even you can even say that my play was very aggressive here on the zero line, but here's where I make the mistake. I actually turn right. What I should have done is come out of this bush line and turn left, or I should have just went left much earlier and got down into this ditch line. But instead, I give the SMVCC a beautiful shot right into my tank. And um, it's unfortunate, like it happens. Um, three people shoot this guy, and uh, no one can clean him up because I guess they don't know, they can't hit the lower plate. Um, or they either don't know to shoot the lower plate, luckily they clean him up here, or they just miss, and it's fine. But we end up cleaning this guy up, and... Um, Eventually, you'll see the result of this game. We try and flank around and everyone dies and we're just a little bit too late, right? And my point about this replay is I tell people like, it's it's no problem, but if that CS was eliminated from the get-go, we would have been able to flank five minutes ago and we would have won this game, right? But people just were so timid about trying to clean up the CS. We let him, you know, walk back behind this building and now we lost the game because of it. So. You know, would, would the result have been different if we were able to win this portion of the map five minutes ago? I absolutely think so. But this is the way World of Tanks is. There's a lot of casual players, and we ended up losing this game. But I hope this helps you out with Runeberg, guys, because Runeberg, like so many people, I feel like don't really understand how this area of the map works. And again, as a light tank, you don't even have to make the play I made. If you want to try and experiment in these bushes, and just get angles on people that are sitting in here, you can do that. But once again, I'm going to show you, like even from even right now from this drawing, use this area of the map to your advantage if you're on this spawn over here. Like, trust me, because you can poke right here and you'll hit people in this area. Like, you can do it. I'm telling you guys, try it out and you're going to be like, wow, there is a really big advantage over here. If you're not contested on the zero line, right? Another thing you can also do is if you're from the other spawn, you can try and get to this little, um, I don't know what you would call that. It's just a little spot next to that rubble pile. And you can contest this area of the map, right? Like if there's someone that, for instance, comes around like this and they're sitting over here, then you can, you can contest them. Um, and the same goes for the other side, really, except there's not a rubble pile over here. So if you're trying to contest this from the other side, then you can use this here. But usually like seven or eight times out of 10, it's gonna be the, the enemy team that takes this little corner here for whatever reason. It's just the way it works out because this is a better pocket. And I feel like people don't want to make that risky play of trying to get here when there's not the equivalent right here, right? You'd think Wargaming would design this so that there's the same, like a similar pocket right here, but it just doesn't really work like that. You can see how it's not the same, right? There's just not as much of an opening and stuff. So try this out on Roomberg, guys. Again, if you're playing in an even 90 or something that's really passive and you don't want to try and make this play, just come to this bush line and experiment with this bush line. You can poke in this bush line, you can outplay people in this area, and then you can advance if you're not contested here. Try and get into this bush line and spot people like this. You can do that, but I really like to open up your options on Roomberg so you guys can understand how this city portion of this map works. So go back, watch it again, and um, you know, obviously a much better player can watch this and be like, you know, you might be wrong about this, you might be wrong about that. Certainly that could be the case, but in my experience, I've always had games where I was able to take advantage of the zero line. So it's my hope that you guys can do that as well. Let's get into the end plates of this one, guys. Again, Roomberg is not one of those like exciting maps to talk about. You know, the entire map, like you have options. 
these are your only options in a light tank is to either brawl or try and do something fancy in that bush line so there's not much more to to cover we did do 1583 spotting 1810 damage it's unfortunate that we lost this one the centurion played a hell of a game man like this this centurion was a very very good player he did very well but our team man like we just did not have a lot of help here and he even messaged me after the game and said man we had no help on that one did we and i said yeah, it's unfortunate man we really didn't they just had the better team and it is what it is you have to accept it guys and move on you can't get mad at this game like the games are always unbalanced it is what it is um and that's it guys we did well over 3,000 combined this game so on runeberg that's always going to make me happy seven shots fired six hits six hits six pens and i hope that this video is informative and i hope it helps you out on this map if you do enjoy the content subscribe guys that will really help me out like comment share the video it helps it to be recommended more and i will see you guys for the next one take care bye bye